You're watching DCTV Denton Community Television. host of The Successful Aging Show. If you have any questions concerning your aging process, please call us at 940-735-4822. 940-735-4822. Or if you have a topic that you would like us to locate an expert for you, please call us. And my email address is woodforkdonna at gmail.com. At this time, we're going to allow our guest to introduce herself and also her passion. Hello, my name is Crystal Adele, and I'm the creator and founder of Black Women Do Workout. And I started this business about three years ago. And um, I love it, and it's a way to inspire African American women to exercise and be more healthy and to support one another and ultimately inspire the whole world to do the same. Well, I appreciate your passion and the way you go about um, really encouraging other people to embrace exercise. Mm -hmm. I, since I'm an African American mm -hmm. and I'm a part of the African American community, I've been told by the opposite sex and even older women, just like, oh, you have big legs, oh, you, you, you're so thick, and all of this. Mm. And then inwardly, I'm saying to myself, if they could only feel the pain, mm -hmm, if they mm -hmm. could only feel how much effort it takes mm -hmm. to, to lug around this 200 pounds, over mm -hmm. 200 pounds, mm -hmm. last count I was 219. Mm -hmm. I may not look it, mm -hmm. it may look good to some people, but to me, my concern is, as African-American women, it doesn't matter what statistic it is, we're almost the top. Mm -hmm. If it's high blood pressure, cholesterol, heart disease, it doesn't matter. So I knew at a certain age in my life, even though I may not want to embrace exercise, mm -hmm. I need to mm -hmm. in, a, in a daily routine. Right. So um, can you tell us a little bit about your website? Well, I have two uh, very significant sites I want people to be aware of. And one of this, the sites is my Facebook page, which is Black Women Do Workout on Facebook. And um, what I do there is I write inspirational messages along with informative messages to uh, over 300,000 people who are following me now and giving them in, in all kinds of tips on how to eat healthy, how to exercise, what the benefits are from different exercises, and also, more importantly, how to support one another. And like you said, you know, you have this weight and you know you want to do something about it, but a lot of times within African American communities, we don't have the support system that we should have of one another. Um, for instance, if you are trying to exercise and, and eat healthy and, and you have friends who don't do that, then they may not support you in that effort and, or they may not understand it. Or they may think that, you know, some kind of way you're trying to make them feel insignificant and insecure about their own weight by talking about it, you know. So that, again, it kind of, that can be, you know, a problem in staying motivated because you're not getting the support that you probably need. If you had a support group like my Facebook page where we have over hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people posting daily on how to stay supportive to one another, how to encourage, how to, you know, reach out to one another by, you know, either inboxing or sharing tips or giving information or posting photos that motivate one another because people love pictures and before and after photo that shows the results and then a story along with that to kind of detail the journey. You know, those things stay um, positive and encouraging and keeps people motivated. Well, my question for you, as an African-American mm -hmm. female, have you always had a passion for exercise? Or? Well, I grew up in a household where exercise and um, eating healthy was, was pretty much the norm because my mother set the precedence for me. 
and I think that's another important factor that most women don't understand is that we have to be the role models within the home. We're the nurturers, we're the, we're the ones who do the shopping, we're the ones who prepare the food, and your daughters are watching you. And so if you have an exercise routine, your daughters is gonna automatically think, well, that's what mommy does, I'm gonna do the same thing, and that's what my mother did. My mother was a bodybuilder in the 70s. So, you know, and before then she taught aerobics. So she was always in that health and fitness type arena anyway. And it was just the norm for us. So she had us in, you know, I was in gymnastics. Um, of course, my brother did sports. And then my sister and I, we both did ballet. And we also, uh, my sister ran track. So for our family, we just didn't know any different. And so, you know, it was part of our lifestyle. And that's another key uh, to the success of being healthy is incorporating, incorporating into your life as a lifestyle. Not something that you're doing temporarily or you're, you know, you're trying to get some goal, but making it about something that you do all the time. And what is the, the name of your website or the mission my, statement? My Black Women Do Workout is blackwomendoworkout.com. My Facebook page is Black Women Do Workout on Facebook, and I'm on Twitter, which is at BWDWO on Twitter. So you can follow me on those three places, and I give information on just every topic, and we're also on Instagram, so Black Women Do Workout on Instagram now, and, um, and that's a lot of photo sharing. Well, thank you. As you were talking, I was really thinking about the number of hours that we watch television. Mm -hmm. Like some of us watch The Price is Right mm -hmm. every day. Some of us watch maybe The Wheel of Fortune right. or even when there's a football game on. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking how you could exercise just sitting there watching maybe what you know, even if it's the evening news mm -hmm. uh, throughout the commercial break. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that you're sitting in a chair today. Mm -hmm. So is it possible from head to toe that you could explain to us some ways that we can stretch the body, strengthen the body, mm -hmm. and that we can incorporate exercise into some of the uh, television time that we may Well, have. while you're sitting, in front of a television, and or even when you get up in the morning, you're still sitting on the bed, you can start stretching, you know. And one of the stretching exercises that I do is by starting with my upper body. So, you know, you can just put your hands up in the air, stretching your arms as far as they'll go, and just kind of reach for the sky. And reach as hard and as high as you can, keep your back straight, and try to keep that position for at least 25 seconds and then you might want to go ahead and lean and stretch and feel it pulling here and again you're stretching the body and you're getting that blood circulating through and the oxygen circulating through back up to the middle and again you want to keep it to at least you know 25 seconds for maximum you know uh, you know results and then you want to do the same on the other side you know pull and then, you know feel it stretching all the way down the side here and all the way back up again and then back up to the to the middle and then down and then exhale and it feels really good <laughs> and if you want to work your arms and your shoulder area you can you can do these types of uh, range of motion movements with your shoulders and for your upper arm you take your hand make it flat like this and pat yourself on the back like that and then pull your elbow up and stretch and hold it for 25 seconds and it feels good. Whew. And exhale. And then come back out again. And you do the same on this arm. You put your hand out. Give yourself a pat on the back. And pull your elbow up. And stretch. And hold it. And exhale. Whew. And you come back out again. And then you can sit. And you can do some, you know, some turning where you turn your body and pull and that feels really good and hold it for 25 seconds and back to the center and the same on the other side hold it for 25 seconds and then back into the middle and then you want to work your legs you want to put your heel into the ground as hard as you can keep your back straight and you want to keep your chest leaning forward and you just stretch down 
inhale, and then you hold it, <sighs> exhale, and you want to creep all the way down with that stretch and continue to inhale, hold it, and then exhale, all the way down. And you start to feel it right here. This is when you start feeling that stretch and it feels really good. Inhale and then exhale and you want to go all the way down and then you feel it and you hold it for 25 seconds. Again, keeping that back straight, not hunching over, holding that stretch as long as you can and then exhaling and you come back up again and that's a good stretch and you feel it once you finish stretching like that and you like again holding it for 25 seconds you feel energized because now you got that oxygen moving through your body you got the flexibility you loosen up your joints you're ready to get moving you know even if you're still sitting there watching television you're like well I know I want to get up and do some more or if you're just waking up in the morning, now you're ready to get your day going. Thank you for sharing that. Welcome. And many of us, I'm thinking about like football season, soccer season, mm -hmm. the price is right. Mm -hmm. Some of us, oh, the evening news, morning news, some of us have particular television time mm -hmm. where we're just sitting there. Mm -hmm. How can we utilize that time to work exercise into our daily routine? Well, what I would recommend you do instead of using television time as a time for, you know, um, you know, some sort of benefit, why don't you take that same time and make the benefit a health benefit and exercise. So just eliminate television time and replace it with exercise time and go for a walk. You know, uh, all right, but we have to take baby steps because I have to look at the prices right and the will of fortune. Yeah, what's more important to you though, watching television or your health? You know, you have to make that decision. Once you realize your your health is your first wealth and not television, then you'll want to replace that time with something that's going to be beneficial to you in the long run. But it's all starting up here. You know, people have to recondition what they want out of life. And what's more important? What's their priority? Price is right, TV, or exercising and longevity. So make the decision. If you say, well, you know, I'd rather watch TV, then you're not there yet. But if you're saying, well, I really do want to make a change. I don't want to just talk about it. I want to be about it. Because a lot of people always say, well, I know I need to lose weight. Yet they do nothing because they want to watch television. So it's not here yet. You know, so once you get this mind right and everything else will follow, you ride on out the door to a park, 35 to 45 minutes of a brisk walk, get the heart rate elevated. You know, just doing that consistently four or five times a week can reduce the risk of heart disease, which again, African American women have a high rate of. And, um, you know, and just find a friend or go with your significant other or you know go to a park and there'll be several other people out there with you so then do it by yourself or if you're not feeling comfortable in a park or by yourself go to the mall a lot of people especially senior citizens go to the mall and they walk around the mall perimeter and they get a great exercise in so you know it depends on what you want out of life <laughs> well I was just thinking mm -hmm. most of us have the newspaper or the mailbox mm -hmm. and so some people have a driveway in mm -hmm. between their front door mm -hmm. and the mailbox. Mm -hmm. And you indicated 35 minutes mm -hmm. of rapid mm -hmm. exercise mm -hmm. to increase the heart rate. Mm -hmm. Inconsistent exercising, um, you know, like a brisk walk. You know, where, where when I say brisk, it's, you know, it's part leisure, but part, you, you know, you want to kind of like keep your arms swinging. You want to increase the pace. And then every time you do it, you want to add another minute. You know, so you start off at 35 minutes and then you next time you go, you maybe go 36 minutes and then you go up to 40 minutes and before you know it, you're doing an hour walk. And you can, you know, you can have so many benefits from walking, low impact on the joints, stimulate the heart, you know, get the heart rate up, um, get the blood flowing through the body, burn calories, lose weight, you know, again, overall health. Well, thank you. What are some of the upcoming events that mm -hmm. you have planned for 2013? Well, one of the things that I've noticed with most women is that they say they cannot control their eating. And a big problem with that is because we do a lot of emotional eating. So February 16th, 
I am doing a emotional eating workshop and luncheon at Seasons 52 in the North Park Mall area. You can contact me on my website, Black Women Do Workout, www.blackwomendoworkout.com for more information or email me at bwdw at bwdwo.com and you can get more information about that event, but it will be a luncheon in a workshop, we're going to have a licensed therapist talk to us about why we eat when we're emotional, and it's called Dating Your Food, and we're doing it right after Valentine's Day. Well, thank you, because in the African-American uh, family, mm -hmm. food can be very important, Yeah. because if someone dies, mm -hmm. you typically will have your cornbread, your greens, mm -hmm. your fried chicken. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I know almost every funeral I go to, mm -hmm. there's fried chicken. Mm -hmm. Right. But, uh, well, you know what? Nothing's wrong with fried chicken because I love fried chicken too, yes. you know, and I love cornbread and greens and macaroni and cheese, but it's all in moderation. You cannot eat that type of food every single day, you know, and there are some people who cook that every day or every week, you know. At some point, you have to offset meals with something healthy. You can substitute things with healthy. You can bake chicken every now and then. You can do macaroni and cheese with wheat pasta instead of you know, um, just, you know, flour, you know, you can do everything in moderation, just replacing it with different types of grain. And um, you can do, um, you know, take out the pork when you cook your greens and use like maybe some, you know, mildly smoked turkey, you know, watch the sodium though. You know, so just changing your routine a little bit and taking away and adding to it with a little bit more of a healthy substitute, you can still enjoy the nice, soul food cooked meal and just do it in moderation or prepare it differently. Oh yeah, you're right about the cornbread because there's whole grain mm -hmm. cornbread. Right. And now I think I've seen it at Walmart and Kroger's now. Mm -hmm. It's not very expensive. Mm -hmm. And I learned from my, I think she's about 80 or mm -hmm. in her late 70s. My auntie, she taught me how to cook greens with the, uh, with the, uh, the broth. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and the uh, bouillon cubes mm -hmm, right. along with turkey mm -hmm. and even cook uh, the beans like that too. Right. So I, I like the fact that even though you're an exercise person, mm -hmm. you still eat ordinary foods mm -hmm. like fried chicken. Oh yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> but I do it in moderation, you yeah. know. And because that's what I grew up on, you know. And I don't mm -hmm. really think that, you know, you should eliminate things that you really enjoy. I just think that you should try to do it with a consideration for how much you're doing it. And knowing that, you know, every day you're eating fried chicken, every week you're eating fried chicken is not going to be beneficial. If you bake it, it, you know, and you can oven fry something too. You can add something I like called panko. They're panko uh, like breading uh, crumbs. You can season it up any kind of way you want, put it in the oven, bake it, and it comes out crispy. And you, you put your season, your favorite seasoning in it. I prefer not to use salt, you know, but I use other seasoning. And, um, and it tastes like fried chicken, you know, so you can trick yourself into believing you're eating fried chicken when it's oven-baked chicken. Well, thank you for sharing that. At this time, would you like to share any other information concerning the objectives of Black Women Do Workout? Well, the main objective for Black Women Do Workout obviously is to, you know, get more African-American women to follow the women who are exercising and who are working out because just statistically, we have a, a large group of women who are from the African-American descent who are not exercising. So we want to highlight and promote and celebrate and, and, and showcase the women who are out there trying to do everything they can to not be a part of these statistics by supporting one another, by sharing tips, by you know, talking about it to the people they care about, their friends, their family. Um, their, well, their loved ones, um, encouraging people by saying, hey, today I lost five pounds. You know, as of, the, as of today, I've lost five pounds because I've been doing walking, I've been doing water aerobics, you know, I've been even doing some gardening, you know, and I've been doing um, just um, swimming, you know, just basic things. Cycling is another great exercise, low impact. You know, I've been doing all these wonderful things, and Zumba is another great exercise a lot of women have gotten into. Or they've been doing things in the house, you know, just taking a simple can of canned goods 
and just exercising, you know, the muscles and developing the muscle, uh, you know, um, to a degree where your, your building muscles can burn calories. So doing things using simple household items can also get you some results that you want. It's nothing that's complicated or rocket scientist type, you know, theories along with it. If you just take basic, very small steps, change your mind, and encourage one another, and ultimately we will put an end to an obesity crisis by being positive, by staying motivated, and by being smart. Well, thank you. What information is located on your website? Oh, my website has tons of information. You can find tips on, on you know, um, exercising. Um, we do uh, before and after real stories with real people with real results, women who have gone from 300 pounds who were just getting under 200 pounds now. And those are the types of stories that people want to really hear and see because they're not models. They're people just like you and me who have gone through some sort of journey or who have made some type of lifestyle change decision and are living it. And they want to share that information with everybody else. So you're going to find all that. And I think to me, that's the most important when you see someone who looks like you who has the same background that you have doing it, you know, and happy about it. And another thing that we're going to also, you know, highlight with Black Women Do Workout is that ultimately my objective is to change the world, you know, by using these wonderful black women who are exercising, who are so happy about it, who are high on endorphins. And because they're so happy and so high on endorphins, they're so positive. So we're going to put out all this positive energy back into the universe and get people to think happier thoughts and get rid of all this negative behavior that we've seen over the course of the last 20 or 30 years. You know, I think with black women being more inspired to exercise, that they're going to give the world something that's, that's more important than anything, and that's positive, loving, nurturing kindness. You know, and you get that through exercising because of the endorphins that you stimulate. And endorphins, like we all know, make you happy. Well, thank you. Thank you for explaining <laughs> that. Now, when we do have the canned goods and we're completing the exercises mm -hmm. at home, mm -hmm. how many <clears throat> repeats or how many times reps. do we, yeah, reps? Well, you know, you can do as many as you feel comfortable. You can start off with something very light, you know, and then you work your way up to something that's a little bit heavier, and then you go into... Um, failure. So, mm -hmm. for instance, if you, you do these as many as you can until you feel like, okay, that's enough for me, you know, until you feel some sort of discomfort, you know, and you don't want to get to a point where as soon as you feel discomfort, you're like, oh my God, I can't take it. But, you know, you want to have a little bit of resistance there so you can feel the effects of the of your your effort, you know, and the results of it and have some benefits from that. Well, thank you. It has been great talking to you today and learning a little bit more about Black Women Do Work Out. Mm -hmm. And uh, at this time, will you please share with us uh, your contact information and the best way that we can have contact with you? Well, you can reach me through my website, which is www.blackwomendoworkout.com, or you can email me bwdw at bwdwo.com. My name is Crystal Adele, and I am the creator and founder of Black Women Do Work Out. Thank you. Thank you for coming today. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you all for sharing this time with the Successful Aging Show. I am Donna Wood Fork. We are here on Tuesday and Thursdays at 8.30 a.m., Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday night at 7.30 p.m. If you have any questions concerning your aging process, please call us at 940-735-4822. Have a nice day.